Okay. Uh, uh, welcome to the FICA session. And uh, this is our third little edition. So it's been a little break, but now we're back. And the topic for today is online or flatline, whether an online presence is important for us as entrepreneurs today. And, uh, and this morning I got a call from the guy who was supposed to perform saying that he was coming down with the flu. So I have beautiful Emilia Montessa <laughs> and Luca to come down. That's a call for us, which is definitely a beautiful step up. So um, with no further ado, I think we should let Emilia and Luca do that thing. Cool. Thank you so much for having us. Yay! <coughs>
a Swedish song for you. Yes. Yes. Um, it's a song by Cornelius Facebook, who, if you're a Swedish person, you would know who, who he is. Um, he wrote amazing songs and he's like a really well-known Swedish um, songwriter, although he's from Holland. And you know what? He never got Swedish citizenship. No way! Never. He never got Swedish citizenship. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> anyway, he, he writes this really quirky songs. This one is about a young lady who um, is upset with the moon. She says she doesn't understand the point of the moon. She says everyone keeps talking about how beautiful the moon is, but and she says all men are pigs because they're just talking about how romantic the bloody moonlight is, and she doesn't see the point of it because it's just it's a dead thing hanging in the air. It doesn't even have uh, water. This is Telegram to the Full Moon. <laughs> the whole land sank a In the 
this world you left for me The cords that held me firm for all these years in love Sheltered me but also left me hanging free And I don't know much about what will come from me But I know not to run They don't say the future's not so certain now These steps could not be mounted anymore I don't see a world that's spinning from control It's just as wild and untamed as it was before And I'm a walking ghost amongst these subway crowds I study all these eyes that study me been here before this is how it kind of works the FIFA session started as a, uh, as a live session where with the focus on uh, having a discussion and trying to bring up topics that we think are important for the industry and for the two sessions that we've done before we've spoken about thinking outside of the box and also uh, staying true to yourself as an artist or as someone who is in an industry where there's lots of facts coming thrown at you. But today we wanted to kind of speak about um, online, um, uh, I think I called it online a flat line, and what the importance is of having an online presence today. And um, I know that no matter what industry you're in, um, your CV is, could actually be Facebook today, rather than your business card or uh, for certain industries it's LinkedIn 
for me, it might be a little bit more Facebook, a Facebook page and stuff like that. So that, these are kind of a few things that we're going to be talking about. But I would like to kind of just pass the mic around uh, and, um, and maybe you guys can just give a brief introduction and just say a little bit about what, what you um, like, yeah, what you do and, and, and then I'm going to ask the, the rest of the questions. And then we're going to open it up for everyone to kind of participate. Uh, including the partners of Rowena Rain and Adam and Ruby over there. Hi. <laughs> so the more you are engaged with us, the better. So feel free. Right. So here we go. Is everyone here an artist, like Cecilia? No, no I'm not. I'm, I'm not. But I'm uh, online. Um, I run a community called Love and Sweets. I have fifty thousand followers on all the different channels. So I have uh, Facebook, the website. Um, Twitter, Instagram, and um, yeah, I work online with the community to help people find jobs and flats. And uh, I do events. I've done a few events with Cecilia. I had the website for five years, and it's growing every week because Swedish people who move here really want to need, you know, they really need help to, well, <coughs> they want to have support, you know. Are you started the website. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that five years, and it's going well, and you know, it's growing. And obviously, I know how important it is to have an online presence. Mm. And I, th I think maybe worth mentioning is that London Suite is Suites is really like the hub. When you're Scandinavian and you come to London, you might be young, you don't know enough, you don't know anyone, you go to their page. For me, for example, I use it a lot for when I want to rent out a room in my flat. And I've noticed over the years that I prefer to live with Swedish people only because it's an easier communication. It has not, no other reason. But so, and then How there's. How did you find it from the beginning? How did we find it? I mean, we found each other at uh, an event, yeah. a Scandinavian fair. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's how we found it. But I found, I found you much earlier than you found me. Oh, you did. <laughs> so you did, you did go to the website. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And then when you, when when you did the reboots, it was like, oh my yeah. god, there's so much other stuff that I can look at. Yeah. So that was really cool. Yeah. yeah so you you definitely she's become like a key person mm -hmm. when it comes to. I moved here to move away from Swedish people, but now I'm just constantly <laughs> surrounded by. <laughs> and you all chose the, the Swedish community. Yeah. To kind of <laughs> Great. Well done. No, but but really, you're you're a massively significant person on the kind of Scandi scene how people connect to you in so many different ways, besides your events, yeah. but yeah. But, yeah. Amelia? Um, hello, you can hear me, right? Yeah. I do it because of the filming. Oh, sure, let's, yeah. Sorry. Let's, uh, what, what, uh, I'm, a, I'm a musician, a singer. Um, I write my own songs. Um, I also run my own courses, so I use Facebook um, and websites. <laughs> yeah, my online presence is really important to sort of promote everything that I do, um, selling my albums and uh, and also promoting my courses and stuff. So, and you've been here for a while. I've been here in London for a very long time, seventeen years. And what made you come here? Um, I wanted to have one year of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I was seven. Seventeen. Oh, seventeen. <laughs> Yeah. No, I just wanted to come here for a year and study, study a bit abroad, and you know, and then suddenly your whole life is somewhere. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Right. So let's just get into the questions. So um, the first question is, how do you think your customers find you? So your customers, clients, fans, yeah. whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, do you want to start trying? Um. I think um, I don't have any competitors at the moment, so I think I'm lucky in that sense that people kind of word of mouth um, looking for something and they will find it. But it's mostly through Google. Like if you see and you Google uh, work in London, I think we're number one and live in London. And if you, I, I, I need to be better on that because I've been a bit spoiled that it was number one and then other, you know, like experience stuff are sometimes taking over. Um, but I think Google. Um, Whatever industry you're in, whatever you do, I think Google is like search engine optimization is 
so important to work on, and I constantly update your website with blogs and links, and link within the website and stuff like that. Whatever you do, even you, you know, if you, because you do your your singing courses, mm -hmm. and if someone Google that, you know, you you want to be found through that, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, so do you spend do you spend a lot of time on the links? So making sure that you no, have no, I mean, <coughs> it's kind of automatic. No, I like I I just do it, you know, by. Um, automatically, you know, like I, I don't spend time on it. When I post an article, I know exactly what to do. And right, search words to tag. Um, mm. I right. I use WordPress. There's so many good websites um, you can use to build your own website. Like Weebly, I think is one of them. Like it looks so professional. You could, I guess everyone knows nowadays. It's so simple to do. Suggestions are always welcome. You know, to do a great really? website. Um, and on another note, like to just. Sorry today. Um, for Instagram, because I always have my Instagram, we only four thousand there. You know, Facebook is the biggest one, um, but I never have any consistency. But I think as a business, it's good to have. But it's one app called Canvas, which is super good to create your own kind of Instagram. Facebook. What what does yeah. it do? You can just design your own stuff like right? super easy. You don't have to be a designer. You just do it on the app. Okay, so it's a picture, so film. Yeah, you just. Yeah, you just do whatever you add your own pictures and put text in, and yeah, it's super nice and easy to use. Okay, very cool. Canvas, canvas, yeah, super good. Great, that is awesome. What what type of? I was going to ask you guys as musicians, do you ever use MySpace anymore? Uh, what no. social platforms do you use? Never. No, no. Mm -hmm. is that out of the? That's completely gone. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm sure it's there. So for music musicians, yeah, I have a musicians use? Facebook page, yeah. which is also linked with my Twitter account, which I use very, very rarely. Yeah. But it's also linked with my website. So whenever I post something on my my website, it goes straight onto the Facebook musicians page. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I use. Yeah. And well, that's it. Like, do you find it working well? I've got so much to learn about this stuff. Um, I do. I do find it to be to be useful when you promote gigs and uh, yeah. But I need to learn a lot about it to sort of opt uh, sales and all this stuff. I'm a terrible businesswoman. I like to sing songs. You're a singer, honey. But an amazing singer. Yeah. And great song. But the thing, the thing about being an artist nowadays, you have to be good at all of that stuff. Uh, you have to learn about it, which is a ball ache, but it's also really great. If you know how to do it, then it's, I'm sure it's amazing. But, I'm but, but, but okay, so that's another question. This is another question. Do you have to do it all yourself? Right. Well, in, in our, well, I don't know if, well, in my, where, where I am, in the jazz scene, yes. Uh, I don't have to do it by myself. I mean, does anyone here want to do it for me? Because no. I can't pay you anything. No. You know what I mean? That, that's the thing. I'm sure there's loads of people who would love to help me out, but I can't really pay them anything. No. But I, I think that maybe that's also, you know, if, if you look at a, a company, mm -hmm. you know, let's say a, a, an accountancy, maybe I do understand that to a certain level, yes, you have to. Either you have to educate yourself or you have to do that. But if you look at a, a corporation structure, you do whatever money you make, you then reinvest in your company. Mm -hmm. And and I'm, I'm on the same page yeah. as you, but I'm just trying to think like, how does how do you guys do it? Does anyone have any feedback or any ideas? <laughs> I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> How does Norwegian Rain do it? Do you have have you do you have someone who is a, a, a very savvy social? It's you, isn't it? Um, Come on. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I'm on my Twitter so it's Norwegian Rain. Today I have the mic crazy in the back there. So Norwegian Rain, um, it's it's interesting because. Um, the London branch has been running since June last year. So Norwegian Rain, Norwegian Rain has a separate uh, Instagram page, for example. Uh, Norwegian Rain is comprised of T. Michael and Alex Heller. So Norwegian Rain is Alex Heller's page. Then T. Michael has a T. Michael page. 
and then um, what's his name? The furniture is by Modern Tribute, and Modern Tribute has a Modern Tribute page. So we were sitting down brainstorming about uh, because the London one is all three in one. So we were thinking, okay, if you go to Norwegian Rain, you see punctuations of Alex's you know, Alex Robson. And then you go to T Michael, it's T Michael's page, a little bit of Norwegian Rain. Modern Tribute, a little bit of everything. So London was a separate entity representing all three. So we were brainstorming and then we came up with the 193 Piccadilly, which is the address of the space. And then we did that 193 Piccadilly, we could add whatever's happening. So Fika will go up the 193 Piccadilly, and Right now, so we'll add Fika. If uh, we have an event, we'll put it on 193 Piccadilly. If we have a uh, new event, <coughs> we'll put it up. So 193 Piccadilly is the voice of all the three brands in London, as well as um, our personal stuff. So everyone here comes from a different creative background, so I'll post to more artist stuff. Um, on 193. On 193, yeah. yeah. So like uh, T. Michael does T. Michael. Yeah. Uh, Alex Heller does Norwegian Rain, and the modern tribute is separate. But 193 is everyone who works here, so we have the freedom to post whatever is on interest. actually, because then you've got so many different areas. Entities yeah. still promote the same thing. Exactly, and everyone has like a, a different eye. So, like, if you really look at the photographs, you kind of realize if you, if you have that eye, you kind of realize everything kind of looks different. Wow. Because I will use all the Instagram photos. <laughs> uh, Chris is more of a Chris will just kind of take a nice clean image. And then Isaac, who works here as well. So, depending on who's here and what eye you have, that's how we use it. But I think been mostly, uh, to my knowledge or my contribution has been mostly on the Instagram. Yeah. Everything else, social, Facebook and otherwise, is mostly handled in all. Okay. So we, 193 is the London voice. So Instagram for us has been a gradual pick up. We need to push a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But I think we figured out Instagram was a good way to reach out and because uh, Norwegian Rain has a good uh, presence online, Team Michael has a good presence online. If they repost everything and then we link it back with the hashtags and stuff, it still comes back to us. So I think it's uh, and also because we, we have visual stuff. Aesthetically, whereas music maybe you might put a clip, we have photos or products and stuff. So if you put up a product and then you put a story, then it works out in a different way. So socially for us, it's a gradual process. Yeah. But uh, like everyone else, it's a learning curve. There's no right or wrong. I think it just need to be out there. And then keep pushing it, and then it's time you Yeah, great. Right. In that case, Thank you. Okay. Uh, I had a, uh, no, I, I didn't know this, because I thought I knew how social media works, but I don't, there's so many new stuff that is coming all the time. So today I learned that you can actually, uh, not an app, but on a website, you can make your Instagram page like 60 uh, pictures an hour automatically. Um, so I met a girl today, she's a big food blogger, and she got, yeah, she has a lot of followers now, and she gets invited to all nice restaurants. Um, and I was like, how did you do it? So she was just like, I said that, so I don't do any work, just like a lot of stuff, and then she automatically, automatically gets followers back, people who have hashtagged like London food or something. Um, yeah, just a, a tip, if you're like a musician, you can choose some hashtags that are relevant. Uh, I didn't know that. But, very cool, yeah. definitely. And a bit fake. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because you, you, you can buy likes, can't you? But then, yeah, yeah that, I mean, it's, that's, that's horrific. Yeah, yeah that's, that's bad. But, but so this is a different thing. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you like uh, pictures under certain hashtags, and then hopefully people find your page. Mm -hmm. So it's more to kind of, yeah, for people to find your, your page. And obviously, she's very niche. It's food. People love food. Mm -hmm. um, as a business, you know, or as a private person or a singer or something, I guess it could be hard to get organic followers if they don't know you, of mm. course. Mm. Yeah. But um, um, what do you guys feel works for you? What do you think you get fans or followers for? Followers for? Because as a business, I know that uh, a big percentage is about return business. So, and I went to a business fair once and it said it takes 11 interactions for someone to buy from you. 
So, uh, and that could be that could be a chat or an email. Someone sees you stuff along the line. But um, what kind of um, what kind of um, things have you found really works for you to kind of get that return business? So anyone is free to to answer. I don't, I don't sell anything or, but I. Uh, no, but you're, you're. Yeah. Um, what do you mean, followers. Um, funny stuff. Uh, <laughs> funny. I think every business or whatever you do, I think it's always good to put in some humor there. Um, that's what I. I think you know it makes people comment. It makes people happy. And I think yeah, humor in the, it works for me. It works for the um, the fan page. Um, yeah, humor and, and also obviously irrelevant stuff. Mm. Um, of course. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. Um, my name is Natasha Clark. Um, well, it's wife and we run Uptown Yardy. Um, I think Can you just tell what Uptown Yardy is? So Uptown Yardy is a, a shoe brand. It's a British shoe brand with a. Well, I'm going to say. Uh, with kind of a, a Jamaican influence um, on it. Um, yeah, and it's a, a unisex brand, so it's good for men and, and women. Um, we've been going for about a year and a half. Um, and in terms of um, your question, I suppose at the beginning, um, Rowan Moore and myself was quite shy, and we wanted the brand to just be the product. Mm -hmm. But what we found that people are really interested in those here is who's behind the brand. Mm -hmm. And the more that we have become present on social media, the more people are into it. Yeah. into it, absolutely. Yeah. They want to see that we live the brand. Yeah. And I think there's much more about, if you're a small business, mm -hmm. if you're like a cottage business, that people can see who's the lifestyle behind yeah. the brand. That's and so um, we recently um, uh, did a crowdfunder, which we didn't reach our goal, but what we did get was a lot of publicity. Um, we were on the radio, we did some podcasts, and certainly the, the, the hits that we got the most for were things about us, mm -hmm. rather, uh, mm -hmm. rather than the product by yeah, itself. It's yeah. So they, they do like to know, and that was globally. Wow. Do you have an Instagram then for the brand, but you are in the, in the yeah. 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 You're in the and people are yeah. in the pictures, and, and you start to realise that the, the brand is becoming something when you walk down the road and you say, hey, you're up town, you are the Yeah, yeah. And you don't say, hey, you are the brand. Yeah. yeah. And you didn't want you are the brand. Yeah. 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 And you have to appreciate yeah. that, that yeah. you may want to be private, but that yes. might not help yeah. your business. When yeah. you sell, uh, is that, do you have a store or is it online? No, purely online. Online, yeah. And we sell more of the products that we actually wear. Yeah. Or if we, Post a static pair of shoes by themselves. There isn't much interest. Yeah. But if we're wearing the gum or the shoes, yeah, then there's a lot more interest. Yeah. Yeah. That's really my yeah. model. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's true. Yeah, I yeah, know, absolutely. Oh, that's great. Anyone else? What's the, what's the name? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell, tell you. you. Mine. I'll just speak up with you. Uh, with <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I found that was my brand. The more real people that would post pictures of, of themselves wearing my stuff, that's what people wanted to see. Mm. And, you know, I could be like fashion shoots and all this kind of stuff, but if I put in my bio, DJ, auntie, that's what people kind of really got into. And then the clothes, you could be like, oh, I'm working on this, not interested. But if they see the product on a real person, mm -hmm. and they just all the That's things. humanizing, isn't it? Really? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's what, what it is, is yeah. that's what Instagram or social media has become, yeah. is that we've taken out the art directors, we've taken yeah. out the photographers, yeah. we've become our own publishers. So yeah. 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 that's what people want to do. And I use it as a newspaper. I mean, Instagram is like, oh, okay. Yeah. Whose newspaper am I going to go on? I know this one has that opinion. I want to know what she's doing. Uptown Yadi, I want to know where they've been. Oh sure, but I didn't know about that event. You know, so you kind of like go through. Yeah. Yeah. So hashtag away. That's yes. <laughs> and, and on top of that, what I find really cool is that when you find the people that you like, uh, so I like your page, and then 
when I buy a pair of shoes or something, I'll write something, oh my God, I got those shoes. So, and then maybe Amelia will see it and she's like, oh, wow, well, look at that. So I really feel that it's, is, is, yeah, it's a community. And when we like each other's stuff and we comment on it, those are like the old school kind of word of mouth when yeah. you'd be like, oh, you should go to my barber or you should do this or whatever. Like Yellow Pages doesn't exist anymore. Yes. It's the search engine, I think, is a super key that you are the alternative, that you are visual when people search for you. And then it's about getting references mm -hmm. and, and recommendations from people who, you know, you can, you can go, I can go to Adam's Instagram and I'll be like, wow, this looks super dope. And then he has posted about, you know, Femi and I'll be like, oh, cool, I'll check him out. Mm -hmm. So it's really about building that broader community because then friends of friends of friends and friends, you know, can, can build on that. Can you please just tell everyone what you do, please? Yeah. Thank you. Um, hello. <laughs> um, I, I'm Lee Yes, what it's called? A brand's called You, Me, We. Um, What's it called? You, Me, We. Okay. Um, what I find funny is if people see me, they go, Shanti 74? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, clothing brand. Oh, yes. excellent. And we can find you? Shanti 74. <laughs> 74 on Instagram, yes, perfect. Yeah, but you can also find her at Spitterfields uh, for now, at least. So you can go and check out the lifestyle. Um, and your stuff is online. Pure online. Pure online. Well, we see the swag, so it's all good. Um, so um, I want to ask, what do you do to stay connected to your fans, followers, or customers? Uh, and I have a couple of, um, uh, just in like, Social media, with your clear ideas, do you have any strategies? The search engine kind of <laughs> popped up here again. And through your web page, is, is Instagram your web page? Or is, do you have a web page? And how do you draw uh, attention to that? Or is there any, yeah, what do you guys do to kind of stay in touch with people who hopefully are gonna buy again or come to your next gig? And um, I do events. So, because it's a community, you know, it's um, uh, I, I post stuff uh, not too much. I see so many big companies, they post too much, and it's you know never. But I mean, yeah, just too much. I think I just do maybe one a day, and it's relevant. And we do um, a lot of interviews with Swedish people in London about their life, and we, we visit them in their homes, and we take nice photos. So very personal. Um, and uh, I also do events. So I do only three. Big, well, it's 10 all together, but three, during three big times, um, culture events like midsummer, and then crayfish party is a really big thing in September in Sweden, and then Lucia mm -hmm. that I do with, with Cecilia. And that obviously um, gets, you know, get my followers to stay, and you know, it's a strong community, and we get to know each other. And, um, and also, like you said, I, I think I kind of became a person behind it as well. So it's not just like a page, it's like, it's me, it's my friends, and you know, mm. we, we are their friend in London, basically. Can I ask a question? Mm. How consistent is everyone? Because this is my problem. I'm like on it, like a ninja, and then I'll go away for a month, and I just, that's what it. You do? Go on, don't you? I do it online. What do you do? I, I'm a hairstylist. Okay. I'm lucky though, because like you were saying about the search engine yeah. optimization, all that my, the person who owns the salon, mm -hmm. even though I'm self employed, he is so good at it. Yeah. He's like obsessive, you know, kind of character. So he's relentless. The man is amazing. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I, I have to, and I learn a lot from him, but it's definitely the optimization that is the one. Mm -hmm. He's on it. And like, we're boom, we're up there. Best salon in London, best salon. I don't know how he keeps us there, because you're right. Yeah, because you need in. to refresh it. Do you have a blog on your website? Um, oh, he's got so too. much going on. It's yeah. Stuart Phillips, and I'm, I'm self employed within the salon, so I like my freedom, so I don't want to kind of own mm. or anything like that. But it's good that I've got him because I wouldn't be as consistent as him. Well, do you do the social media? Um, I do do social media. I have a, like, a private group for my own clients. Mm. I put up a lot of the work that I do. So where so where do you have this the is, uh, on Facebook? Yeah. So keep that private so they feel special. 
Yeah. They also know when I have cancellations, when I'm in the country. Um, there was like a bit of a search party out for me, like, where is she? And I was like, I think I better get on this. Do you know what I mean? Like, it made me realise I needed to do it. Yeah. But I'm so inconsistent. I find it hard. Are you consistent? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, I think I want to do like, I'm sitting there, like, in the week, and trying to, like, make a plan, so she can get that, but, like, yeah. this is kind of the app, I just, uh, Told you about it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna use it so people can see it's my post. Yeah, yeah. But then I just find like it takes over your life. I f- I find you know I find, yeah, and then I'm I not find like, um, I need to find someone who does it for me because yeah, it takes my time and I need to develop. Yeah, you, but we have to do that for a living, no? Yes, an actual time. We all need one of them, basically, don't we? <laughs> that's what we need. Yeah. I think, I think, well, that's, you know, that's another thing that, you know, maybe the FICA session yeah. can do. We can set up that we can meet somewhere yeah. and I can hire someone who is a professional uh, yeah. social media. Yeah, and just have, you know, a, a three-hour session. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll just split the bill and then, you know, Something like that, but and SEO as well. SEO, and that's something that's like totally f- unfamiliar for me. Oh, it's back to the search engine, but there is something, and this kind of little tip there's something called Hoot Suite. Oh, that, yeah, it links everything. Yeah, and you can choose whatever the social medias, right? Yeah. And I think that if you, if you sit down, I try to have my Mondays. So Monday morning, that's the first thing I do. I sit down and I plan out my week. So I have a hashtag for each day. And then I might just post on top of that to something randomly. But the Hootsuite really kind of uh, highlights. You can pick who, whatever social media that you want to use and where you want that specific post to go. And so it's kind of easy in that sense that you get everything in one go. It unifies. Yes. Yeah, and you can get that one message a day that has that Music Monday or Teaching Tuesday or whatever it is that you have that's specific yeah. for you. And at least you can get one message out on all the platforms. Yeah. Or, and so for example, I don't have Instagram it's on like there. It's schedule. Yeah, it's like a schedule. You so can that, schedule Instagram, right? Yes. You can do that on Hootsuite too. Oh really? Yeah. Does it yep. So it does it for you. You decide the timing, what day. Is it an app? Yes. It, it's a web page or an app. I do it on my computer. So it's actually, it's, it's really helpful because then I can kind of just post when I feel like it. Mm. So I might go, oh my God, I love your hair. Click, click. Boom, boom, boom. Or, you know, so it's not, I can kind of get the strategic things yeah. out of my way. Um, and if I know that, for example, I'm building up to an event like this, I can then set, like for a whole week, I can then post different things about the FICA session. I might post a picture of Ruby or, or Norwegian Rain or whatever. Yeah. And you can kind of build that way. I think unless you're an actual geek, like an actual kind of, um, you know, techno geek, like he, he sits there and he thinks of things to type in. Oh, we're at the top. And he's like, that's his thing. <laughs> It's yeah. not my thing. No, but, but like also that the, the, there's yeah. like if you if you designate a little bit of time, yeah. you can then plan out the whole week. Yeah. You can have your hashtags already written down on a document. Okay. So all you can do is like copy and paste yeah. and book it. And then I do it from Tuesday I, I do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday Monday. Yeah. So that by next Monday I'm already covered on the Monday and then I kind of... So that's Hootsuite, it's great. If, if you feel that you want to have consistency. Right. Um, Collaboration's also good. Yes, please. Give him that. Hello. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say collaboration is always very good. Yes. Um, I think it caters to everyone, all arts. So you've got musicians, artists, hairdressers. And I'm not good at this, but I hear, and all my peers in the mental industry, they're constantly finding people that aspire, or they aspire to be, or influence them. And then you collaborate. And, you know, we've all bullshitted with our CVs back when we were kids. But, and we all have 
like a facade sometimes, and you've got to start somewhere. So the best thing to do is usually approach the people that you love and like. I work with a lot of people in the industry of uh, mentor around Mayfair, and I started from the bottom, and now I'm here. <laughs> but no, uh, you just say who you are, what you do, um, and you say, you know, say you're the hairdresser, right? And you, and you say, okay, look, I'm cutting Drake's hair, you know, or someone the equivalent of some from London. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and, then, and then people want to get to know who you are. Yeah. Who you're cutting the hair off, and then there's a collaboration there, and you can get like a product which will bring you followers. Mm. And, the, and the guys that you're working with have 100,000 followers, for instance, mm. and they'll at you. Mm. So for your shoes, you could go to any magazine out there and say, Look, I've just got the stylist, he's put me in Jocks and Nose magazine, Jocks and Nose drop, you know, name drop you, and all of a sudden you're, you have a new. Uh, Platform. New foot patrol, yeah. Yeah. The platform. Yeah. And all these guys from the streets or from New York or wherever the wherever the uh, the distributors are will find out who you are, what the name is, look you up, also models. Mm -hmm. So it, it's always good to collaborate with people that you know. That's nice. No, of course, absolutely, and especially someone who might have a name, you know, besides the the the, the community. Yeah. And just getting someone. I've, exactly, I've built a community with one on Instagram. Now, yeah. Uh, with people that I love and I can relate to. Yes. So if you're a musician and you love a certain jazz musician or yeah. someone who has. A you love Joni Mitchell. Exactly. Then Mama, you, yeah. you, are, you, are, you know. Well, yeah, you, you Jane, make friends with them. You make friends with Instagram. Them. Yeah. And, and that kind that, of people, yeah. 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 And I know it sounds crazy, like, how am I going to befriend someone who? doesn't know me mm. but okay for instance you're, you're doing your music it wouldn't be another singer it could be you want to collaborate and there's an opportunity there but there's an opportunity in someone who does microphones to find the best microphone seller mm -hmm. just for you to say look i'm a fucking bad -ass singer mm -hmm. don't know who the hell i am but check me out now here's my instagram and you can just start instagramming your vocals right some people do that on youtube you know but it's just you it doesn't have to be an amazing video but people can hear your voice and be like, fuck, this girl's talented. Here's your free microphone. Mm -hmm. And you're just, you're blasting the name out. They're going to blast your name out because they like what you do and appreciate your music. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you've got, you know, 500,000 followers from them, and that's their microphone business. And they're at you. Mm -hmm. And people can start recognizing who you are. Mm -hmm. And it basically, it's like a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. yeah. From that point on, then you go to speakers, mm -hmm. and you've got the best speaker, and you've got the best. Whatever you need, you go yeah. and get all your material for free. I'm sort of doing that at the moment with clothes. So I'm, I'm yeah. wearing this Swedish um, good on for the inch, it's called. So I'm doing that just here. Yeah. Oh, really? Today? In yeah, Shire. in London. Yeah, she's in, in town at the moment, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yet to see what's going to come from that, but that's a really good idea. Yeah. And funnily enough, uh, we're actually sponsored by Sennheiser. So Sennheiser and I started working a little while ago. So they gave me this microphone. Uh, for performance, and then they gave me this not to have, I think, but on, <laughs> on, I'm not going to say it's for me to have, but it's <laughs> definitely a very long loan. Uh, yes, yeah, so so you know, it's like it's such a great idea, and I and I really do believe that uh, you know everyone has started somewhere, mm. you know, even the most famous person like. Like the times when, you know, London Jazz Festival comes around and, and we get to go and see all our, mm -hmm. you know, our idols. And I remember meeting Wayne Shorter and he was like so cool. He was like, you know, your granddad. He was like just chilling and talking about space and you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So yeah, so I think with, with the right intention and, and with your heart and soul on the sleeve and, and being really passionate about something, I think that you can definitely connect with with people on all levels. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did. Uh, yeah. So I met uh, one food blogger today, and then um, two girls called Love and Food Babes. They have hundred thousand followers. They're Swedish, um, blogging about food, Instagramming food. Um, so I met both them yesterday and this girl today because I do events and they don't do events, but they like food. 
So I just said, like, why don't we do like a pop up together in the summer because they have 100,000 people and a girl had 20,000 and they like food and I like to do food events. So we're going to do like a Swedish pop up now and that will obviously help my brand a lot. Amazing. Because they have 120,000 together. That's great. And together with your followers, then that's. I was going to say, it is a lot of hard work on um, Instagram and Facebook, but um, I think it's really important that you look at who likes your posts. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, even though you have a lot of people, I was having a go at Ron about this the other day, because Anthony <laughs> Hamilton likes one of our posts. And we didn't know that. Because we didn't look through, we just saw, okay, there was 100 likes or something, it's okay. And somebody else saw it. And inboxed us and said, Do you know that like, Anthony Hamilton likes your post? And we're like, Yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> and they had. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you look through because it might be a big star yeah. who you're not expecting yeah. because of that hashtag or something else that have comes you, to you your through, page. Then? Yeah, we did. And we sent him through a, a message saying, Would you like to make your pair of shoes? So, oh, really? yeah. Right. So it is that kind of stuff about. Looking behind behind the numbers, well, and yeah. that can take time, but I that, never yeah, know who's yeah. there. Keep it personal. Yeah, but then it's also that. about like how do you follow up? You know, I don't think I think don't be frightened because yeah, most of what they like is say they they say, they say nothing or say no, but you know, yeah, follow yeah. it through absolutely. Yeah, oh, thanks to growing followers. Yeah. But it's interesting actually to see yeah. you be confident if you're going to be on social media. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's already saying, This is me, so to be shy about exactly. it's just mm -hmm. it makes no sense. Well, wow, everyone's mm -hmm. screaming, aren't they? So, so but, but just to follow up on this, because I've this is something that I have no clue how to follow up on, and um, I have lots of people uh, that has like 15k followers just follow me randomly just because I do a rock called jazz workshop. And they like, oh, that sounds nice, or whatever. I kind of, I do a little post about what we've done this week, and then people kind of <laughs> dig it for some reason. So I don't know how can I connect to their followers, considering they're like fitness people or they do stuff that I don't do. Like, how do you? Oh, should I do an instruction? <laughs> <laughs> it's just terrible. What? Spot what you're thinking about. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, no. I do think there's, there's one thing to know is that this is a, I hate to, I hate to say this word, but this is a millennial game. Uh, and so <laughs> you have to have, you have to be active. My niece is 17 years old. She's got a thousand more followers than I have. I've been there. Let's get out of here. <laughs> no, but that's just the thing is, if you yeah, are so creative, true. this is another section of business. If you do want to grow, you need help. Yeah. You do need help. You do need somebody yeah. that's going to, if you're busy doing something, because mm. that, that is, I think that is, yeah. you know, and there's a lot of young people out there that want it. So I would like, you know, fashion houses, they have interns. Yeah, it's, that's what I said. You know, if you have intern. these kids, so just like, this, and I'm going to top up your phone, that's pay you for your you data that. this month, but you hashtag the hell out of this. And I, I think that is another way to go. Yeah, they know it's exactly what they're doing. Like, it's it's a different language being yeah. spoken out there. Then. But it's their era. That's why. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a totally different era. They're on that, you know, they're like little ninjas. I have so we haven't even mentioned Snapchat. Oh, I've got Snapchat. Yeah, of course. I, I, yeah, I don't know how to do it. That's another thing that I don't need a password for. But <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Yeah, yeah, crack code. Millennial, <laughs> millennial participation. Yeah. There's a lot to keep up with, though, huh? That's the thing. Mm. All right. So, um, should we do, like, maybe um, one, one little question more? Um, so we kind of touched a, 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 a little bit, but what do you look at when it comes to whether you want to follow, or you want to buy, or you know, uh, yeah, uh, work with someone. Uh, I call it. Uh, um, I mean, when it comes to work with someone, because I do the food events, um, 
I do actually, the first thing I do is Google and I look at reviews and uh, I judge like that, you know, and I just go to the next one if it's not something, you know, also the quality of the page or the website, if it's not professional, even though it's like salmon, which doesn't have anything to do with, you know, a website, but I kind of judge it immediately if it's like that, if it's not professionally done. So, um, unfortunately, because it's food, but I think for me, that's just how I kind of judge, like, immediately online. But you go to Google first, so Google, yeah, always. Is, is a web page more important than a Instagram? Um, yeah, I think so. I don't know, I think it's... Yeah, it's not, yeah. Um, yeah, reviews as well. And also if the company has like, responded to reviews and you know how active they are to respond to, to questions or um, if I send a request and I don't get anything back on you know, two days, then I wouldn't work with them. Mm. Um, so yeah, but, but I Google a lot. I Google people all the time. Like mm. it's, um, yeah, you, I think people also should check what, what they have when you Google themselves. Like I Google myself a year ago and I had that like, picture from when I was 18 <laughs> on um, like a fan's website. Yeah. Like, yeah, you just need to kind of double check that. <laughs> But how do you get that stuff off? Yeah. Why don't want that? Um, well, you can just kind of uh, email the website that it's on, or depends on what it is. I mean, um, anyway, yes, that's another session. Yeah, yeah for sure. And <laughs> um, uh, we kind of touched on it, it a little bit, and I just want to go through the room and see if anyone has any other tips on apps or sites or. Um, uh, yeah, call apps, sites, and uh, written, called, written features, features that you want to recommend. Uh, this one called, um, I just found it, found it as well, it's called Ripple, R-I-P-L. You can do your own videos, like, you know, the ones you see all the time now on Facebook coming up, like, you know, a video and text uh, about, you know, something cute or whatever. Uh, some people super good for you know just short videos you can make for your. So what's that called? R I P L. So ripple, ripple. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's cool. Uh -huh. Anyone else? <coughs> no. Uh, I'll I'll suggest there's something called Giant Square. So um, what I kind of like to do sometimes is to take a photo. So I would take a photo of you guys. And then I would divide it up into nine pieces, and so then I would like a grid. Yeah, like a grid. But then it will come up as nine pictures on yeah. my Insta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then for that corner, I'll be talking about you. Then that corner, I might be talking about the people on stage, and then I'll be talking about you guys, you, 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 or whatever. Okay. And you can add also. Let's say that I just take a photo of that lamp. Whatever the purpose is of me taking that photo, whatever it is that I want to say, I might start the story on the first picture, and I might say, my grandma was always important to me, the second picture, and then I'll do like a little bit and some hashtags. Then the second one will be, we were really close because she used to be a ballet dancer, and I always loved dance. Giant square. That makes people want to see Yes, yeah, and how you kind of build a story okay. and being personal even though you're not in the photo. Yeah. So. Any other? Boomerang, um, Parallel Space. What's Parallel Space? Parallel Space basically means that you can have all of your things because I've got like a professional Facebook mm -hmm. and then I've got a, a personal one. So, so I don't want to keep logging in and out. Nope. A bit like Hootsuite, but yep. there's parallel space, but you can have everything else on there as well. Like you can have uh, WhatsApp, you can have everything, basically. Okay. You've got all of the different apps. So if you wanted two of them, you could kind of do that. So it's parallel okay. space, that's quite cool. And it's um, it says AD on the front of it, it's a yellow square, it says parallel space, anyway. Um, Flipgram obviously is, you do videos. I do like uh, fast motion video, I can do a haircut or whatever. And then I can do slow motion, so I can get someone to flip their hair like, ooh, all that sexy, so you can see the colour or whatever. So that sort of thing. Uh, like rewind it, whatever you want to do, basically. 
um, which is kind of cool. You could get someone like dancing in your shoes, yeah. you know, stuff like that. That would be quite cool, wouldn't it? Um, and then what else? Um, boomerang is, you know, what boomerang is. It's just a quick little video. Which, to be fair, let's face it, on Instagram or any of those things, nobody really wants anything long or quick. Yeah. Just quick, boom, you deliver it, done. That's oh. what they want of it. So. Thank you. Please give it up for Charlotte. Please come and share. Thank you. Uh, and please give it up for Amelia and Luca. And can we have one song? Is that okay? Yep. Yes. All right. Let's give them another round of applause. Luca and Amelia, thank you so much for coming, everyone. Um, I'm sure all of you have met Ruby, the lovely Ruby Hernandez. And Chris, who is also one of the managers for the Winter Reyes, you know. So, but um, let's uh, give it up for the media and Luca! Oh, when something's not right 
Stop. 
Thank you so much.